the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Patients in your community, thank you for your commitment to the American Red Cross <clears throat> Blood Program. As a dedicated blood drive sponsor, your leadership in the coming months will help to prevent blood shortages. Shortages. And that's from the American Red Cross. Thank you for your help with blood drive. Sincerely, Jessica Colson. I will. I need a motion to approve the minutes for the January 10th meeting. I make a motion. Second. Motion by Trustee Williams, seconded by Trustee Jarvis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I will take a motion to approve the minutes from the February 9th meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes from the February 9th meeting. I'll second it. Motion by Trustee Jarvis, seconded by Trustee Penn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I'll take a motion to get the bill to abstract 14. I make a motion we pay abstract 14. Motion by Trustee Hennon. Seconded by Trustee Penn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Motion to pay the payroll. Make a motion to pay the payroll. Second. Motion by Trustee Williams. Seconded by Trustee Jarvis to pay the payroll. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Trustee reports. Trustee Henry? Um. <laughs> They've been working on the lower, the dock down there, uh, Ralph's down there working on it. I think he's finishing up today, isn't he, Greg? We'll be done Friday. Uh, that's coming on well. And then backfill it, and then we're going to do the sidewalk and all that. Well, we backfill it, and we're going to do a full sidewalk off so we can drive some drivers where the sidewalk is to tie back to, tie the top back to. So we'll have that out for him Thursday. He'll do the tie-ins, and we'll still do the job. Uh, they've also been working on the uh, Upper James Street Dock. They've been repairing that, replacing boards on that. Uh, Greg went out and got a couple bids on some new signage for down there. These are a couple of the the uh, signs. Their estimates. Their estimates for new signage down there. Um, we definitely need some new signage down there. It needs to be replaced. <coughs> <laughs> Working on that, and just went off and uh, checking out the village park and see how that's looking. There's some work that needs to be done up there in the springtime. I got a list of a punch list there, but that's what I've been doing. Okay. Plant they've been drawn down and digesting your digesters to thicken the sludge. Um, the thicker grinder is still out of order. Uh, I have a quote on uh, price for that. And also the lift pumps, uh, impellers, suction elbows are in very bad shape and I have <coughs> prices on that. Uh, problems with check valves on the lower pump in the water plant. Here's the Timmerman came down, pulled the pump, ordered a spare check valve. Been busy with bringing a car trying to get everything ready for the Catherine Cornwall uh, project. Meter readers are done, readings are done, and doing rewrites. Uh, 
Um, the, the men have been working on uh, equipment. They've been working on the paper for next year, the sweeper. They uh, helped with winter carnival and hauled snow. They helped a little bit with Ponoc. Um They plowed a few nights and did some sanding. And uh, we wanted to let everybody know that recycling is every week. So that's about it. And it's working a lot better, right? Every week. Well, with every week, you got a choice. If it's really bad out, you can put your stuff out the next week. So if you miss, you, you don't have the stuff. You're not stuck with it for four weeks. I just felt that wasn't working because at the end of four weeks, we were doubled up and we were just barely getting done in time for the end of the day. So it works out better for us and better for the people. So that's the way we're going to try it. Police Department report January 10th through February 14th. Thirty-five calls and complaints. Five arrests. 10 vehicle stops, two tickets issued, two court security details. The 2009 Crown Victoria was driven zero miles. 2006 Crown Victoria was driven 519 miles. And the 1999 Crown Victoria was driven 1,913 miles. Dog control officer report, three dog complaints, five issues, five warning issued, submitted by Chief Maloney. <coughs> Old business, Diving Unlimited International. Does anybody have any questions for Richard since he's here tonight? I got two things. Sure. Uh, first of all, I, didn't, we, I don't know if we discussed it the last time, but I don't know. This is a for profit business. In Europe. I mean, I, I want this to happen. I think it should happen, and I think we can somehow get around this to make it happen. It's a for-profit business, and we're giving our blessing to go up and use the village park. It's a holiday weekend. I know it's in October, but it is a holiday weekend. And I don't know how the village if the village can give a for-profit business use of village property like that. For them, obviously, to sell wares and and make a profit. I mean, but we do that for the, bike. the, board, the bikers weekend and all that. It's, no, it's, there's, there's nothing for sale. Well, this is a demonstration. Sell. If you want to buy something, you have to go to your local shop. The people from Syracuse, they might come up here, do this demonstration, this trial. If they want one, they have to buy it from a local shop in Syracuse. I, I understand that, but Diving, Diving Unlimited is sponsoring someone, this, this wetsuit provider. Well, they, to, they make them. Okay. Then they're, they're a for-profit business. Oh, obviously, yes. Maybe you can't buy it there, but somehow I could come home or maybe say, come on over here and procure this. I'm, my, my thing is, is I don't want to open up a can of worms by allowing a for-profit business to go in up there and use that and then open up this big can of worms. I don't know how we can get around that. Mark, how does that work? <laughs> Well, I mean, this has been an issue you've had before. Uh, you know, you've had people, well, I don't, I shouldn't say you. I've had this issue before in other communities. I can't remember right now if it was here or somewhere else, okay? But we've had people, particularly this time of year, who are tax preparers who want to use, like, a room like this to prepare <laughs> taxes, but it's their business to prepare taxes. And, um, in a case like that, uh, most of the communities that we work with are going to say no because they feel it competes with some local person who actually rents a space or owns a space and runs their business. On the other hand, you do have people who are in it to make money who come to help support certain community events you have. Certainly when you have uh, like Bikers Weekend, you may have other vendors in town who are here for the weekend specifically just to support the activities there, whether they're selling food or, they're, or whatever it may be. Um, 
If you go to some other communities where they have arenas, you see this all the time. I mean, Clayton has antique shows, and people are selling their antiques, and you know, and and all kinds of other shows, and it's and it brings people into the community. And so, on the theory that it's promoting other things in the community as well, they they allow it. You just need to have some sort of a policy about how you're going to do this, so it's applied fairly to everybody. Um, You've had, you, I've had people who have like uh, ball fields or other places. Generally, the concessions there are run by people who are doing it on a not-for-profit basis. It's, you know, it's uh, Little League or it's somebody else that are doing it on a not-for-profit basis to support their not-for-profit use. But uh, I, I think there was at least one that was a for-profit organization that was doing it, but. Uh, it's basically a rental. They were paying a fee or a commission for the use of the space. And uh, uh, I guess you have to decide what you want to do in that respect. If you were going to rent out space, get a commission or get paid for it, and you did it on a regular basis, it could change the character of the property from being one which is tax exempt to one which is taxable. So you need to be a little careful about that. I think if uh, I could just interject, I think we saw Kay here earlier, back when Kay and I were both on the board, <clears throat> when the uh, Empire Bolt Mines was in business, there was a lot of dialogue going on at the time about quacking bush using the village park and the village dock, the upper town dock, to load and offload passengers on it. And I believe if you look back, I don't Okay, you'd have to help me out here however many years ago that there is already some some dialogue about about um, for profits doing business at the park. I have a question. Have, have they um, contacted like River Edge, Bonnie Castle, Boardwalk? I was asked that question, and I <coughs> referred them to the Chamber of Commerce, so I don't know if they have contacted. They asked if there were places to stay, and I mentioned, yes, we have many, and they wanted a place to eat and party, and I said, yes, we have some nice restaurants in the village. Uh, and I did direct them to the Chamber of Commerce to get a better feel of what's in the village. But that's up to them to find their places to stay, not up to me. You know, I meant to hold the hold the function, like to, to dive off of Edgewood or Bonnie Castle or Edgewood or River Edge. I don't know if they've contacted them. When uh, Harry Rod been. was mayor, remember we got this thing down, and I contacted the point of contact in Canada, and they got a hold of the folks in California, and they chose Rawlings. Virginia over us. So this time they came right straight to Canada, then down to me, and I would present it to the board. Richard, were they going to dive off the, the dive park end or? The beach. They're going to dive off the beach. They want the beach. The beach. They want the beach. Okay. Yes. Because if you step off in this suit and it's not insulated right, you could have some problems. I've been there, done that. So that's why we're going to walk in, with, uh, people doing the demonstration, and they will learn up to their waist probably, and there will be certified people with them as indicated on the flyers that I left you guys. And they are insured. Yes, I see that. And the ones that's going to be making the money is really going to be the restaurants, the bars, the motels where they choose to stay. And when the participants come down, that's up to them finding a place to stay. Hope they go through the Chamber of Commerce and give everybody a fair shake. Is there any way to find out from this uh, Diagon Unlimited if uh, they have contacted any of the businesses that they could stay at and hosted at their facilities versus the park. 
Well, they're, they're not going to be able to because they're not going to have the beach like Richard's mm -hmm. talking about. They want that slow He's egress. He's absolutely right. They want a slow walk in. The beach is the best spot to go. <coughs> I think that we, at Hunting Castle, we used to have a beach there. And in Edgewood, they have a beach. You know, I'm just, I don't want to compete with the hotels that are in business to well, they're going to have to stay some. They're going to have to. I I hate to say, to say no and have lose the whole thing and lose the, all the guests. Mm -hmm. These people are going to be coming in on Friday, and they're here Saturday and Sunday. Now, obviously, they're going to have to stay somewhere. Somebody's going to have to stay somewhere, eat somewhere, <clears throat> and do this somewhere. You're going to um, eat somewhere too. And eat somewhere. I see they are serving lunch both days. I. That's kind of competitive with the... The way I read that, that the is they done. want to uh, basically get the food and provide it to their people, the participants, sort of as a complimentary thing. Right, it's included in the $10. Pardon? It says it's included in their $10 fee or whatever is the, yes. the barbecue. So. Right. Now, if they don't want whatever they're putting out, probably hamburgers and hot dogs, they can go down to the corner and get pizza and chicken and whatever else. Or down to the ice cream shop, you know. They're going to be free to do some roaming around the village. Someone want to make a motion to accept <coughs> their request? Steve, I, I will send an email and ask them if they have checked. But you know, you guys don't meet till one month from now. I'd like to postpone it and let him contact the group to see if they can get River Edge Flying Castle for somebody to host it versus the village park. I, I'm afraid the next place they're going to look at Brockville because. The, guy I talked to in Canada, <clears throat> he's trying to get it up there in Brockville, so in one sense, he's helping me in the same time he's also hindering me, or hindering us, because he tried to get all the people to stay up to Brockville, and he's going to bus them back and forth, and I called down to California, over to California personally, and said, that's not a good idea, you're crossing international boundaries, and, you know, why bus them when they can stay right here? Do we have a motion to this until the next meeting? How about this? How about, oh, this one? <coughs> As Marcus said, the Clayton has the arena, which is a unique facility they have, which helps the entire village and town. The That beach there, anybody that's ever used a dry suit, you go in wrong, all the air goes to your feet. You're, you're, it's like you're fishing for bulldogs and your feet up, up in the air. And uh, it can be very dangerous. So you got a unique situation at the beach that's not available at Bonnie Castle, River Edge, or anywhere else. It's nice and gradual, it's sand, it's very safe. And you know, they, they are going to stay somewhere, they are going to be. It is October, and I don't think usually, I mean, you don't have lifeguards that time of year because nobody uses it for swimming. So it seems like it would be a great use for, a, for an asset, a unique asset, it wouldn't be used otherwise. It'd be different if it was Fourth of July. I wouldn't be saying that, but right, I you, believe it's like Columbus Day weekend. Right? You would know. Yes, there are a lot of people in the village for Columbus Day weekend using. It's it's a typically what's it's what's, fairly busy, but it's not real. It, it's it's slow in September. That's the last busy weekend, but there's room for them to be there. And my guess would be that time of year, the village park is probably underutilized as opposed to July and August when it would be, you know, very crowded. I don't think they would have a negative impact. I think people probably enjoy watching it. Especially if somebody makes a couple mistakes and somebody's got to help somebody there. Richard knows what that's like. Right. And, and by the way, I have had to meet exactly what Mr. Thompson's. I stepped off into the Islander right there by the hospital. And my air, for some reason, went to my feet. And I went up 47 feet. Feet first, and you want to talk about getting scared. And I popped up and yelled, and my two buddies dragged me in. 
I don't think we can interfere with the present use at all for that time of year. Anyway. Motion by Trustee Jarvis to accept Diamond Unlimited, I guess, request to host their event here. I'll second. Seconded by Trustee Henry. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry on. Got to go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Mr. Hogan, Class Grade C Operator School, February 27th through March 2nd. He's looking for permission to attend this school. <coughs> I make a motion to send to that school. Second. Motion by Trustee Henry, seconded by Trustee Jarvis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. For instance. Uh, we had discussed this last month in executive session. Uh, we have been able to implement the settlement we talked about. I just need to have permission from the board to send the, sign the stipulation discontinuing the action. Just a, a motion? Well, I, yeah, it should be formally confirmed that uh, we can implement the settlement and that I'll sign the stipulation discontinuing the action. So just a motion to implement the settlement? Correct. Okay, I'll take a motion to. I'll make that motion. Okay. What? I'll second that one. Motion by Trustee Jarvis, second by <coughs> Trustee Penn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Senior trip chair changes. <laughs> Sharon, I am no longer going to arrange the senior trips. Please be advised that John Massey and Janice Gilmore have agreed to take over arranging the trips. Thank you, Barb Fenzel. So, I guess first we need a motion to accept Barb Fenzel's resignation from the senior trips. Do we? Need to do that, Mark, or is it just? Do you do you appoint her to that, or is that just a position that she's volunteered and done? The board appointed it. If it's, it's adult recreation. Position. If it's if you've appointed it, you should accept the resignation, okay. and then you need to appoint somebody to fill the position. Okay, I will take a motion to accept Barb Bundle's resignation. I make that motion. Okay. Motion by Trustee Williams, second by Trustee Jarvis. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Um, this is addressed to the village board. It says, as of February 1st, John Massey will be the chairman of the village and town senior citizen bus trips. Janice Gilmore will be the co-chairman. So I guess I need... Okay. Yeah. So if they're if they're interested, um, I would like to appoint John Massey and Janice Gilmore to take over the um, village and town senior citizens bus trips, and I will take a motion to accept that appointment. I'll make a motion. Second. A motion by Trustee Penn, seconded by Trustee Williams. All in favor? Aye. <coughs> Carried. Um, crisis management course that's going to be held here in the village office or in the municipal building on March 2nd. What I need to know from the board is if there's money in the um, training and schooling budget for the officers, if we can allow, because I think it's important to anybody, um, any first responders, and since we are a part time department, you never know who's going to be scheduled for those days. If there's officers available, and Brian makes that information available available to them and they want to come to that, can we pay them for that day as a school or training? It's through Homeland Security, so it is official training. So I need to know um, <coughs> if anybody has a problem sending the part-timers if they're interested in going to that. Would, would they be around anyway? Like, they don't work. This is about school, basically, right? Um, yeah. Okay, well, well most of our part-timers don't work during the school year. Right, but they work, our part-timers are, are local, so some of them are park police, so even if they don't get it through the through the park police, if, if they're not scheduled to them, I mean, there is a potential that, I mean, there's events all summer, there's 
stuff going on at the school, so there is a potential for that. But they would be they would be working at that time. I just think if it's in the budget, um, it's important for any first responder to any incident to have that training available to them. I wouldn't be for personally. I'm not for having five part timers come in here to this seminar right. and spend $150 in labor mm -hmm. times five or seven guys. I, maybe we pick the guys that are on full time and have them come in. But that's my personal. Okay. Well, that's what I'm asking. I don't know how anybody else feels about it. Okay. Um, my next question is, since we are holding it here, and the fire department is going to help out with coffee and tea, and um, would anybody have a problem, the sheriff's department is coming, park police, schools from all over the area, would anybody have a problem going to the Big M and seeing if they would, um, if we can get donuts for the morning and maybe cookies for the afternoon and some sort of refreshment, or do you want to try and make that here, see if the fire department wants to help out? Well, originally, the, we were talking about going to River Edge yep. and paying for that. Mm -hmm. So I think we definitely have the money. Yeah. And savings. I just want to make sure everybody's okay with with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they need a motion for that. Um, it won't hurt you to have one though, so it's. I make like a motion to buy coffee and donuts for a crisis management day. Okay. Motion by Trustee Henry, seconded by Trustee Jarvis. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Anything else on your old business? <coughs> New business. Sherry Pennington has picked uh, Richard Drake as to be her acting justice, so I would like to appoint Richard Drake as acting justice and any motion to accept that appointment. I make a motion we accept that appointment. <coughs> motion by Trustee Williams, seconded by Trustee Penn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry. Albert Hine and Carrier. Introduction. Um, my name is Mike Alderson, and I'm a partner at Alder Tiny Carrier Architects. And um, I just wanted to uh, more or less reintroduce our company and uh, let you know what we've been doing for the last uh, 10 or 12 years. Um, we're located in Watertown, and uh, partners are uh, myself, uh, Pat Carrier from Watertown. Uh, Matt Morgan from Clayton, um, Annette Mason from Cape Vincent, Brian Jones from Clayton, and Jay Jones from Adams. And um, we, we've been working on a, a wide variety of projects for the last 12 years. A um, few examples are in the, in the book that you have there. Um, Brian Jones does um, strictly residential work. Um, up along the river in the lake and, and pretty much anywhere. Um, he's done, he's gotten some um, pretty pretty decent awards recently. Um, he's done for New York uh, construction industry and uh, you've probably seen some of the articles in the newspaper recently. Um, I do mainly commercial work. Um, right now I'm finishing up a uh, uh, $9 million design build project uh, with Rob Reddick. Um, it's a border crossing for Homeland Security. And I think that's in the back of the book. Um, <clears throat> we just finished the hospice project in Watertown. Um, we worked on that with uh, some other local companies, and uh, that was a private bid. Um, we do a lot of work with uh, grants and uh, um, We've worked with uh, probably oh, at least a dozen different municipalities around the area. And uh, um, we've got water and sewer projects. Um, we've done uh, 
town barns, we've been in the town offices, uh, fire departments, uh, pretty much can do anything. Um, we've got, uh, so we have architects, structural engineers, uh, civil engineering, land surveying, and uh, we do minor mechanical and electrical engineering in-house, but we also use outside consultants for that on larger projects. Our, uh, our land surveying department, um, Jay Jones is our land surveyor and he is uh, probably one of the leading um, uh, land surveyors in the country actually. He writes ma uh, magazine articles and uh, teaches classes around the country on uh, 3D machine control and uh, uh, 3D modeling, terrain models. Um, if you've ever seen me, if you've seen bulldozers with big pods on them or tractors for large farms. Uh, what they'll do is they'll make a 3D model of what, what they're building. Instead of sending a surveyor into the field, they'll build a model, feed the information into the bulldozer, and uh, basically it tells him to raise the blade, to tip the blade. They do everything without an actual survey in the field. Um, on the engineering side, we also, right, right now we're working on a, uh, we do a lot of federal work. And <coughs> we're working on a uh, machine gun range out in the right now. Um, it's a design build project with RAC, it's out of Teresa, uh, range and civil construction. Um, and the way the federal work works is we team up with a lot of different uh, companies. Uh, based on our small business status, and uh, well, we did have hub zone status. Um, but now, as of the first of this year, uh, Annette Mason is the, the general part, is the uh, managing partner of Auburn County Courier, and we're certified as a woman owned uh, uh, federal business. And a year from now, we should have our certification as a state um, woman owned business. Basically, to get state work now, you pretty much have to be in order to go home. So. Um, I guess um, that pretty much covers what we do, I guess, in a nutshell. Um, anybody has any questions? Or? But I guess the main reason I'm here is. Um, we pretty much haven't had to do any marketing in the last 12 years. Uh, all our work comes to us by word of mouth, and uh, we, uh, you know, we just I just wanted to get in front of you guys and meet some of the people. We've done quite a few projects in Elk. Uh, I think at one point we probably even worked for the village or the town before. So. I see some uh, nice homes in here that I assumed were business, but they're residential. And yeah. That upsets me. Yeah. Very large, beautiful homes in here. So, um, Thank I guess you. if you have, you know, if you ever need any, any services, or we, we do bid on projects from time to time, maybe you guys um, put up our fees for us, so I won't continue with that. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Water main water replacement report signatures. Steve? Uh, on top of the Cavalry <coughs> Cornwall project, the Department of Health has put a little statement that we need to replace the water distribution, a distribution system that goes between. Um, Cavalero's Pizza in Three Teams, right? Talked to Greg about it, and it's right behind the, the pizza shop in the parking lot, right? So we're going to go from that shutoff valve, or from that area, across the parking lot to the water main, the height of right there by um, the back side of the... Back side of the Right, so... 
but this is to be um, supposed to be included with <coughs> surplus funds if available from the Catherine Avenue project will be utilized for to perform the system change street distribution work. But if that isn't available, then it becomes a priority um, for the village and to be a uh, requirement to get it within a certain timeline to be completed. You're not five But we need to, there's three contracts in there that need to be signed. They're all the same for the main part to assess it. Okay. Is there, there's no timeline when we have to have the sign by, correct? Because I think um, Mark should, we should pass this on to Mark and have him right. take a look at it. We before. just got, the letter is for years you can move on with the Catherine Cohen. You couldn't move on without that letter on the Catherine Cohen. Right, but before, I, before I sign that, I think. Right, that but that's what that letter is for. Right, right. Yeah. So we will pass, do we have a vote for that? Okay. We can pass this on to Mark, we can do that for the meeting because we're free right now. Um, so, I guess. Daniel, yeah. I don't think people knew where that was. So, that's right between CP Romans and Cavalero's Pizza. There's a big water main that runs up a little alley. So, the state wants to take that out. So, that is, that's the main feed that feeds the whole village to the water towers. And if something's to happen in between those buildings, there's no way to get equipment in there. So what they want us to do is join in the parking lot in the Empire parking lot, which our main cuts across, which we own, and go straight down. Yeah, in CP Romans. Oh, right behind CP Romans, we go right straight down the parking lot and join right on the, uh, the Church Street. Right, it's going up the hill right there, right behind the direct side of the We join in right there, so we have another loop to go around that if, if something be happened. There's, there's no way to, we don't act on no other way to feed until have you bid this out already? No, no, no. This is this is a project that's been on limbo for a while, and, and it's just a, it was one of the stipulations that came out and done, and if there's leftover money from the project that Captain Cohen had, we want to make sure that that's one of the projects that's in mind. That's what it's for. Do we um, <clears throat> want to make a motion to table that to the next meeting? Don't give Mark a chance to look over that contract. And <coughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know if we need to do that. Uh, motion by Trustee Penn. Second. Seconded by Trustee Jarvis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Chamber of Commerce Sue Boyer event approval. Is Sue still here? She is. I think what we're going to do is um, the next meeting. Sue is going to come back and kind of compile all these and put them in one list so we can approve them all at once rather than going through each of them one at a time and making a motion for each of them if everybody's okay with that. And then everybody can take a look at them. It's, it's, there's nothing pressing that, that has to be done at tonight's meeting? Okay. Um, I will take a motion to table Sue Boyer's event approval request. Motion to Trustee Jarvis. Seconded by Trustee Penn. All in favor? <coughs> Opposed? Carried. Investment policy. <coughs> um, I put these in everybody's boxes. There are a few policies that um, either didn't have or that needed to be updated. Um, this is one of them. Has everybody had a chance to read the investment policy? <coughs> Before we make a motion to approve these, do you need to look at these policies? Um, well, I, I didn't know it was on the agenda. I would have looked at the old one before I came up. Um, right. The only thing we've done recently with investment policies in a number of the communities is that the bidding thresholds have been raised by the state. Some of the old investment policies still have the old bidding thresholds that were under Section 103 of the General Municipal Law. And so we've been updating them to just sort of cross-reference the general municipal law so as that that changes, you don't necessarily need to come back and change your investment policy. Okay. Um, 
you know, I, I can take a brief look at it. I don't know if is it going to be a major problem if you do it on the next meeting instead of this meeting. For me too. I haven't looked at it. Oh, um, no, actually, that and the um, the code of ethics, and I should have given them to you beforehand. I well, that's okay. Um, there's there's a lot of work going on on ethics at the state level. Okay. Um, in fact, you probably received a correspondence from, I think, the AG's office here in the last month. Okay. They've been soliciting local uh, ethics laws or policies from all the communities in the state. I think they're trying to sample what's out there. But uh, we're currently existing um, in the state law and the general municipal law on conflicts of interest and ethics is, is really kind of archaic and difficult to work with. And uh, there's been a lot of, I think, thought and effort going into trying to come up with some major revision to that. One of the key issues with the ethics law is whether or not you have an ethics board. So if there's an ethics question, they can render an opinion on it. It's been my experience that for a lot of small communities, it's hard to come up with an ethics board either because it's just hard to get that many people to serve on boards when you start doing planning board, zoning board, and everything else, or because uh, the communities are um, so close-knit that it's hard to come up with people to be on the ethics board who are related to the people who are asking the questions. So uh, I would tell you that the county ethics board does exist and has, uh, from time to time, rendered opinions on requests. So sometimes it's possible to piggyback on the county's uh, board of ethics in terms of having an ethics board to review requests. But it's still important, I think, to have your own policy. But I'll be glad to look at it. I'm just okay. saying it's an area where you're likely to see changes coming from the state level down over the next uh, year or two. Okay. Um, so I guess I'll take a motion to table the code of ethics policy. Make a motion to table it. Motion, motion by Trustee Williams, second by Trustee Jarvis. All in favor? Aye. And opposed? Carried. And also a motion to table the um, investment policy. Do I do those backwards? One of those just has to be handled ethics or? <coughs> Oh, okay. Okay. So, so, perfect. Um, corrective action plan. We have put together a corrective action plan for the comptroller's office, and if everybody's had a chance to look at that, I will take a motion to accept the corrective action plan and send it on. I make a motion to do the corrective action plan. Motion by Trustee Henry, second by Trustee Jarvis. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. And before we move on, I have I have one more thing. I don't know if anybody else has um, I thought it was going to be under old business, but I, I think we missed it, Molly. Uh, I wanted sidewalks on the agenda. Um, I've had a few recent calls about the sidewalks, and I'm not sure. What we want to do is that they're not being maintained, they're not being cleared. Um, there's been a couple slip and falls, and it has to be visited. You know what we want to do if we want to form a committee to look at the sidewalks and come up with some ideas. If we want to send out notification that sidewalks need to be cleared, what's everybody's thoughts? Maybe we should put a notice in the paper. And on uh, June 2. 2. Local bloggers. And uh, ask people to do that. We can tell them what the rules are. are. Are they falling because of the snow being not cleared or because of the poor condition of the sidewalk? The snow. The snow. The ice. Um, I personally, that's why I thought maybe a, a committee of people to walk down and have um, kind of a sidewalk inventory. Um, normally, this time of year would, wouldn't be a good idea, but it's not. Conditions aren't horrible right now. Um, other than some ice, there isn't a lot of snow. 
um, for both for conditions of sidewalks and um, people that aren't following code by shoveling or, or salting, sanding. Um, I'm not sure how anybody feels about that. I think someone today said that somebody covered one up. So, I mean, you probably ought to have a committee or somebody keep track of them. Uh, I think to get the word out there, Channel 2, do you want to do that? Do you want to contact Channel 2? Do you want to put something in the paper? I know water bills just went out, um, so we can't put anything on water bill. I'd love to be on your sidewalk. I wish I had a few more people who would do So I guess what we can do, who wants to take lead on the sidewalk committee? Okay. Do we need a motion for that? Or just well, you just need to appoint the committee if it's going to be. Okay. Yeah. Then we can discuss it at the next meeting or the, the following meeting. But for now, um, I think getting the word out there and reminding people of the code, um, I'm speaking with our code enforcement officer making sure that he's aware that, that we're going to be on top of it is a good start. Uh, Danielle, just yes. a piece of information to file away. If, if, it's, uh, if your issue is the condition of the sidewalks and their maintenance in terms of uh, replacing broken ones or ones that are raised, um, the Village of Lowville started a program two, three years ago on this. And it's been really pretty successful. You might want to give a call if you need a contact, let me know. And, uh, they've had a really successful program. They're replacing hundreds, if not thousands, of feet of sidewalk every year under it. Okay. <coughs> Look into that. Thank you. Um, anybody else have anything on your business? Item number three under old business, the Burns claim. Can you elaborate on that, what the claim is? The I, I can, sure. In 2004, Mr. Burns uh, owns the property on Carnegie Bay Road. Uh, he filed a suit claiming salt contamination. Uh, the suit's obviously been dragging out since 2004, and we were finally able to reach an arrangement for settlement, which is resulting in it being discontinued. So. Uh, that's uh, that's what this is on. Uh, uh, there had been a number of claims filed regarding salt contamination of that road initially in 2004. This was the only one who took it uh, as far as starting a court action. How much is the claim for? Uh, the, well, he sued us for a lot of money, but I think he settled for 30000 I think. What was the original claim? The amount of it? Yes. I, I, don't know right off hand. 100,000 or? Uh, no, it was a lot more than that. I'm not even sure if he put a specific okay. number on it in the claim. Uh, and I didn't bring the entire file with me to tell you, but I can give you the index number at the court if you want to. You can check there or you can give me a call tomorrow. I'll check my I'll call you tomorrow. That'd be good. Thank you. Yeah. Is, it, is it something that we have that I can just get that information um, to You might have it here. Okay. It just goes back a ways. I'll see what I can dig up tomorrow. Now, where does that money come from? Do we have a little stash for stuff like that, or? <laughs> well, it has to come. It has to come from. Uh, it has to come from the general fund, and it has to come out of uh, probably surplus or contingency, or they have to create the money for it. But but the but it's it wasn't a budgeted item. It wasn't a reserve right. in the budget for. Okay. And I have one, just not really a question, but a comment on the sidewalks and the snow removal. That would have to include every sidewalk in the village, including those sidewalks that are in front of businesses that are not open and, and also sidewalks that are seldom traveled. Correct? Well, and th yes, and that's something that the committee, why I wanted to have a sidewalk committee, because there are, in this village, there are quite, quite a few sidewalks that just don't go anywhere. They end halfway down the street, or they they go halfway up the street. I guess what we need to do is revisit that code in the book and decide exactly what needs to be shoveled, where. If it's there's a lot of things in that code book that need to be revisited, and I think that that's one of the important ones to decide exactly what what we think 
should be maintained is impo most important to be maintained how we want to how we want to do it. But yes, once we figure out exactly what we want to do, it will include the whole village. And one of the things that makes side, uh, snow removal on sidewalks is if you don't get out there soon enough before the snowmobilers get on it, it's impossible. Especially when you got six going right down your sidewalk, 200 foot of it. So, and they're not allowed either. Right. Thank you. Any other public concerns? Back to that Burns thing, is he the first one down there that's we're giving money to, or there's a bunch of them now going to jump on the bandwagon. Well, they all filed, they, there were a few of them that filed notices of claim back in the same era that his started. I, I remember but he's that. the only one who pursued it to a suit. When you file a notice of claim under Section 50 of the General Municipal Law, the idea is that you have a year after you file the notice of claim to start a lawsuit. Then it becomes a statute of limitations. If you don't start your lawsuit within a year, then you're you're done. If they didn't start their lawsuits, they're done. He's the only one who pursued it to a lawsuit. Okay, so somebody can't come forward and say the salt is now leached farther down the road to my house. Well, I, 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 I don't know all the facts to be able to answer your question, but for those for those claims that were filed in 2004 and never pursued to court, those claims are, are at an end. Yes. Could I uh, get a clarification in the, uh, the January 10th meeting about the, the picking up of electronics? I know there was a lot of spending. Coming up with a town a permit. Yeah. I just wonder if that, that went through. Or? It hasn't yet. The big city hasn't been holding out yet. Did I put anything on it? Okay. We're just going to hold. I'm just trying to hold them until we can get the okay to go in there. We can't actually, we can't even pick them up at your house. All right. Wait. It's a, it's a pain from me. I'll contact you. You know, everybody wants to call me. Any other public concerns? I've got one. Um, more of a question for Attorney Gibo. I that is correct, Evo or Evo. Well, if you call me Mark, it'll be a lot easier. Okay, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> After the, and I'm not, uh, I'm not here to pile on. I think it's a great thing that uh, you are addressing some of the issues that have plagued the village for five and a half years, according to the comptroller's office. And uh, I, I haven't seen your corrective action plan, but I'm sure it's in. Compliant with what you sent them originally, the things you were going to do as a village and as, as a mayor's office. Um, concern I have is under the conflict of interest, and, you, and uh, Mark, you did say that a lot of that is a murky area, <coughs> and the state's trying to rectify it and clarify it, yeah. and I think that that's really important. Um, under the comptroller's definition, says you many have heard of the conflict of interest the phrase can apply to a various variety of situations all have one thing in common an individual with divided loyalties such as when a person has to act on behalf of the public in connection with a matter that affects his or her personal interest not all conflicts of interest interests are prohibited <clears throat> when it defines a uh, conflict of interest it gives four criteria um, that they must be met one of them being an exception, it can't meet an exception. The piece that I'm concerned with is particularly this ambit situation. And I'm not knocking the company, I'm not knocking any of how it works, but the way I understand, the people that are representatives are also stockholders or shareholders or owners of the company. <coughs> and our, I believe the board did not decide to switch to ambit, our clerk treasurer did. And that reads a direct conflict of interest to someone who's, who's handling accounts, payables, receivables, and they're supposed to be overseeing it. <clears throat> so my question to you would be, if it is a conflict of interest, I'm not saying it is, would it make that agreement with Ambit null and void since it didn't follow the correct, correct procedures? And did they or did they not? Well, I'm sure I don't even know who Ampit is. So it is the electric provider for the village. That okay. Okay. 
Um, I guess I'd have to know more about it. I, 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 first I'm hitting you cold, say. man. You're hitting me cold. I, I apologize. And, and uh, the question, I guess, of whether or not it uh, might void the agreement uh, comes down to a few things in terms of who's authorized to enter into the agreement, was it approved by the board, wasn't it? And I mean, you know, there's there's questions I just don't know. Right. You may you may know, but I don't. And I don't want to hit you cold with anything. And, it, and uh, it would have to be looked at. Uh, and then we have to say, what is the remedy if it was a conflict? Is it, is it, is it you penalize Ambit or do you penalize somebody else? And, mm -hmm. and that's that would have to be looked at. <laughs> and and, and it's, it's really unfortunate, but the, but the rules on these things are really, really, uh, mm -hmm. are really murky, as you've said. Uh, you know, everybody would love to have clear guidelines when it comes to conflicts, and it just doesn't. They matter. were very clear, though, about the people that are responsible for taking on the records, paying out the bills, that part of it, and not having ownership or involvement in it. And I believe this this person would be the actual beneficiary of the account that the village was using that she authorized. And I don't believe that that follows the rules and I don't and I think it warrants investigation by the uh, town the village yes, and the attorneys. If the village board wants me to look into it I will but so far you're the first I'm hearing. Okay. I've been approached many, many times by Jim Costello about Amba. I mean, if one more person dies and I go in the door and he asks me, you know, it's like the people quit dying because he's real big in it. But as a taxpayer, isn't this Amba saving me money? Why would I want to take any savings to hire a lawyer? To I mean, it's it's done. I mean, stay with them for whatever it is, a year or whatever you signed up for. And if they're not saving us a lot more money than National Grid, which, by the way, I've never gone to Amba. It's not going to save me, just what little bit I use, a big amount of money. So I've never gone to that. Not my problem. But as a municipality with all the... I mean, look, at we're sitting here and the lights are on in there. Who's in there? That's a waste of money right there. You know, if it's saving us money, we've got to save money wherever we can these days. Right. We and can't just keep doling it out. I absolutely agree. I, I think that... Um, the Ambit thing has come into question a few times. Um, I know it was recently at another, um, at the town board. So we have actually kind of started looking into the, the Ambit thing already. Um, they even use sales kids at school who have asked my kids to ask them. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, they're everywhere. But see, and that, that marketing piece is part of the problem. Because since the whole customer base is now part of the company, and they're getting revenues from the people underneath them. I, I know people knock it, say it's a Ponzi scheme. I'm not saying that. It's a it's it's a energy buying block. But because the, the way they market it and they don't advertise, they give everybody a little piece. If the person who decides whether or not we're going to sign up is actually getting a little piece, there's a problem there. I, but but if they're saving us money. If let's say. For Valentine's Day, you decided to have a party, and Critter says, well, I'll bring up pizza and wings, and all of a sudden you can fill. Well, guess what? He just made money off of that pizza and wings. That's a conflict. Right. I, mean, I, I don't know, disagree. You, you, I, you know I, what I mean? Absolutely. And I understand what Mr. Irk is saying as well, that he's asking us to look into it, and, and we will absolutely do that just to make sure that we're covered. Now, the question is... What? I'm, an Ambit, I'm an Ambit customer. I'm not a part of the company. I'm not... They are my supplier, and I think that they do save me money, um, but it's not a conflict of interest for me. I, I understand what he's saying. And, we'll, we'll and I do know it. there's a lot of, th unfortunately this is a small village, there's a lot of them that are selling it, and just because somebody approaches, I mean, Jim isn't going to take the money he makes off of me, he's going to give it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But actually he might have sold it to me. That doesn't mean he got the money. Just putting that out there. Absolutely. Any other public concerns? Just one more. I'll be on the sidewalk thing. Okay. You got that. You have I got your early. Okay. We've got two of them. Right. 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 Perfect. Can I just read up these little signs first? Yeah. Signs of Russell Brothers. Oh, sure. 
change the law, which I, I'm guessing you're already aware of from NICOM, which is the uh, which is the new law about maintaining a website and posting your agendas and things prior to meetings on the website. Uh, uh, it's kind of an interesting law in the sense that they're requiring you to do this, but you're not required to expend any money to do it, and I don't know how you do both. Uh, so, <laughs> it's a uh, it's, it's sort of an interesting no, thing, but I, I think you have to, uh, you know, if you've got the means, you need to make a reasonable effort to do that. It, it frankly, uh, your you may be you may be large enough and have enough employees that you can do it in house. I don't know. I think a lot of smaller communities are trying to get together and do it as sort of a cooperative effort. Uh, but it's still kind of a work in progress, and you know, uh, uh, Molly goes to like a clerk's meeting for the for the community. You know, the, there's the county college clerks uh, group, which you may not know about yet, but you also. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, you know, I think it's maybe worth checking with some others and see what they're doing. You currently have a website. Yes. Yeah. So it's just a question. It's just a question of adding this stuff onto your website. Where you're going to have to be doing it on a regular basis. So well, you got That website is kind of. Um, we do have one, but access and, and maintenance <coughs> on it aren't exactly what we'd like it to be. So that's something that we had brought up before, and we just need to move forward with it. Okay. Could you, if, if you don't have somebody in the office who's real good with that stuff, couldn't you use, these high school kids are so savvy with the computer, oh, couldn't you have a high school kid, if she types it up, that all they have to do is input it and tweak it how you want it, and I mean that could be used for community service for that kid. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean there's, there's, a, there's a lot of ways to do that, I mean a cooperative thing with the, <coughs> with the high school yeah. might, be, might be good, uh, <coughs> uh, you know there might be other other ways to, uh, you know, you get up, you get up into some of the smaller communities on Tug Hill that only have maybe a hundred families in the whole town. It, it, it gets a little burdensome, but I think the Tug Hill Commission is trying to do something cooperatively for them. Um, uh, here in Jefferson County, our communities are bigger and have a few more resources. Uh, you know. It, some of the communities are already regularly maintaining their website. Some of them are already doing this. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're not, you need to make a serious look at doing this. I think as you go forward year to year, you're going to see more and more of these types of transparency requirements being forced down on you from the state. If you remember about uh, two years ago, uh, there was a proposal before the legislature that all of your meetings should be uh, videotaped and broadcast on the local access channel. All right. Uh, and, uh, uh, and the smaller communities were able to get that uh, shot down at that time because some of them just didn't have the resources with which to do it. But uh, I think you're going to see it head still in that direction. It may take us longer to get there, but I think you're going to say it's head in that direction. So you might as well start getting prepared for it. Okay. Yeah. Vlogs. You can just vlog for, I mean, would that be an acceptable? Just no, I'd have to be your... Yeah, I told thing. you before that I would show you the mechanics of, of updating your website okay. and to simplify it and streamline it and make it really routine and not, not a burden at all. I mean, it wouldn't take you more than minutes yeah. uh, on a week. The town's already done it. They've already got Jesse Hewitt on doing it. The town approached, approached the subject at the last board meeting. So it's yeah. You, the it's not that is difficult. That you maintain a regular and routinely updated website and utilize high-speed internet connection to post information on the website prior to the meeting. So, yeah. like your agenda should be on there prior to the meeting. If you're having a public hearing, when you're having a public hearing, it should be on the website prior to the meeting. If you have formal resolutions you expect to adopt at the meeting, you those formal resolutions should be on the website prior to the meeting. Okay. Just so you know, the dates for all the village board meetings are on the website now. Are currently correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So. Okay, but it's it's just one of those mandates that's come down from the state. It's relatively new, but. Frankly, it's, you know, they passed it in January and went into effective in February, so you're already at a time point where they would like you to have it in place. Okay. So it's something that you need to pay attention to soon. Anybody else? All right. I will take a motion to adjourn.